afternoon, everybody, and on today's episode of PTL's Garage, we are working on an R32, bro, Mark V generation. And what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be putting this bad boy on coilovers. So let's get to work because this is Pinchy Al's Garage. One thing that makes this car extremely unique in comparison to any other Volkswagen that you'll buy is that it's all wheel drive, AKA also known as four motion. So you're gonna have front axles and a rear axle, so you'll have full suspension that's a little different than your traditional front wheel drive car. Now we all know how the McPherson setup is on the front of these cars, but let's check out the back. Now you're gonna see there's an axle there. You have your shock like your traditional and a spring separate. It's not a McPherson setup, so <clears throat> Makes it a little different, a little bit easier because all you gotta do is unbolt a couple things and you're wham bam, thank you ma'am, ready to go. But what makes it really hard for the rear to get done is this lower sway bar um, that kinda prevents you to move it. And you'll see right over there in the bottom where my finger is pointing, right there. Oh, spider webs. Um, but you'll see the sway bar right there that goes over. Now that what that does is that it keeps tension up on the on the rear suspension. So uh, we're gonna see if we can do the suspension without removing that sway bar, but it might be unlikely. We might have to unbolt it and then be able to remove it. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll get there when we get there. The shock is gonna be pretty straightforward. You got your one bolt here, the two up here, and then your spring. Um, you'll see over here, there's a bolt that holds this control arm in place. Very, very easy and straightforward. It's just the rear is a little bit different because it's got a subframe. It actually has a full subframe for the back end because of the diff uh, for the back um, drivetrain. So we might have to replace a couple things. Uh, we don't know yet until we get to that point, but let's get to work. All right, I'm back. And so I ended up doing the suspension <clears throat> On the bright on the passenger side to confirm pretty much my what's it's all my feeling that this is gonna be pretty easy to do and it was um, so we got the coilovers installed already on the pa front passenger side and on the rear passenger side as well it's extremely straightforward um, it's actually a little bit easier than I thought it would be so we're gonna walk you through the entire process now on this Mark V R32. So we're gonna work on the front uh, driver's side and the tools you're gonna be needing for, to, for doing the front and the rear, okay? 3 8 ratchet, no, half inch ratchet, 3 8 ratchet, chisel, hammer, a um, little puller, a flathead screwdriver, 10 to 12 inch extension, 18 millimeter wrench, 19 maybe. What is this? Uh, 14 triple square, uh, 18 socket, 16 socket, 21 millimeter socket, uh, 13 millimeter socket, and a 15 millimeter socket as well. And that's everything you're gonna need to do the removal. For the install process, you're gonna need your impact gun a 22 millimeter socket, 17 millimeter socket, and a 16 millimeter socket, all deep and one shallow. Uh, you're gonna need those for doing the rear shocks and the front shocks for removing them and installing them, okay? Uh, I actually pre-installed the uh, front ones. And the reason why I did these because the owner already supplied brand new uh, perches and bearings, <coughs> excuse me, so, there's no need to remove or disassemble the old ones, which makes life a lot better when you have this, when you do this job, because you can pre-assemble everything, and all you gotta do is bolt it in once you remove them. It's super, super easy. So on this side, you're gonna need to remove the 18 millimeter bolt that's right here. There's an 18 right here. 
And you're gonna need your uh, 14 triple square right here. This is what's holding the strut in place. Then we're gonna go down below. You're gonna see three 16 millimeter bolts here for the ball joint, okay? You're gonna need to unbolt those. And then there's an 18 right here on the tie rod, okay? Now, I typically don't recommend removing the tie rod, but this time I do, uh, just due to, the f due to the fact that this uh, caliper and the <laughs> brake system on this thing is immensely heavy. Uh, and you're gonna need to be able to move this left and right pretty well. Uh, bring a little jack and put it underneath here just for safety's sake so you don't drop it on you because it's very, very heavy. And that being said, because it's so heavy, make sure you uh, unbolt, or not unbolt, but loosen up um, the brake line right here. There's a little clip right here that goes right here and holds the brake line. You just, that's why we have the flathead screwdriver. So you can pull this up and take it out of the way. Okay, and then this guy just, you twist it off and it's easy, it's mounted right here. Okay. And now we're gonna start removing this um, and then show you what to do next. So we've already removed the 18 that's on here for the end link. We're gonna move this down and out of the way. Uh, put the nut back on here, forgot about to do that. That way you don't misplace it. I already got the nut on the strut already loosened and taken off. So that guy, same process. Keep the nut, set it aside, okay? This has already been taken off loose and same with this guy. So that's out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. Next step is down below the three 16s for the uh, ball joint. I haven't broken those loose yet. Get my little impact gun. This is just so uh, once I break them loose, I just use this to take the nuts off a lot faster. So you're trying to ratchet them off forever. I don't use my impact guns for removals of like breaking loose anything. I use my ratchets for all that. Now the flathead screwdriver is so you can pry the ball joint. Separate the ball joint from the control arm. Okay. That way it gives us the, uh, the play that we need so we can do the, uh, oh, ooh, almost made a big boo-boo. This car actually has adjustable lights. I did not notice that. Typically, it's on the other side of the car or in the rear. I almost made a big no-no. Let's see here. Looks like there's a 10 down below. Okay. So, we took off the tie rod right here. And the way we did it is we use our special little tool here. And where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So, it's a little claw. You see it's got a tip, yeah, unthread it. On the tie rod end here, there's an actual space for this tool to be grabbing onto. And as it's grabbing on, you tighten the, uh, the thread here. And you'll see, as it's doing it, this will, it'll push up on the tie rod until it pops out. You'll hear a really loud thong, and then it's out. And then uh, put the nut back on here just for safekeeping. Set it down, take the tool off. It's very, very simple. You just gotta be very careful with the tool because uh, some of these, I bought, I bought that one a long time ago. It's really cheap. I wanna invest in one that's like solid and doesn't have any adjustments. Um, I recommend not buying these universal type ones, these guys. You'll see they have like a nut here. And the reason for that is that it's like, how can I say, you can change it and turn it around. The problem with these is that the metal is so soft on these plates right here, they bend and they change the angle because of that. Um, 
and because of that, it doesn't really uh, do a really good job of going straight and in, in, stable enough. And you'll see here it's kind of crooked. And again, this is what happens with cheap tools. I've had this for years, though. I've only used it for tie rods. I've never used it for anything else. Uh, on these cars, there's nothing else that you really need a hub puller for or a tie rod in uh, puller. But this works really well. I recommend, though, buying one that's not adjustable. That's just It's one style claw. And that's it. It doesn't have any special bracketry, anything, whatnot. Um, if you need multiple different styles, buy a different style with the exact same thing. That way, these don't damage. There's some that these literally bolt on to the metal arms right here and only have one nut on each side. Those are the ones you want. If they're adjustable, then you can rotate them and they bolt right inside of that. Much, much stronger and um, less prone to bending like these cheap ones. So now the tie rod ends out, the ball joint is now removed. You'll see here, I mean the ball joint is unbolted, control arm is done. The next step here is to rotate your, uh, your end right here. You'll see here, we have now access to the spot right here where the um, strut is bolted onto the spindle. We're gonna grab our chisel and hammer because we don't buy uh, tools for this job specifically. We just use what we have around the house because I'm the average Joe and I'm not gonna buy specialty tools to do this job when you can do it with any tool you have. Just find the right one. Okay, and you'll see here, it's already making its way down. It's already separating from the uh, the spindle and the strut. Uh, once you give it a couple bangs, you'll be able to wiggle it on, down. You see, I'm already down a whole inch. Just keep doing it and repeating the process until it falls down. Just be very careful because this rotor and uh, caliper uh, combo is extremely heavy. So you can definitely hurt yourself pretty badly if you don't catch it okay and just be very careful guys okay so you'll see here that i have my jack on the spindle uh pretty much once i took the three bolts on top all i did was hit the strut from underneath just tapped it once or twice and it popped right out easily that was it so now this is done it's removed now we'll bring our preloaded strut and install it Okay, so you'll see here, there's two arrows, okay? There's a real little notch on here. The notch faces out. The two arrows on here face into the engine compartment, left and right. These holes line up towards the back, this one towards, towards you. So, remember that. That is vital to your guys' success and a proper installation of your coilover. Your strut bushing should have these two arrows, meaning this should be facing in the engine. Then you'll have this hole, and plus this little notch here, facing outward. This will face more towards the right, but it should be in this pattern specifically, okay? job has to be done by hand no special tools it's just very tedious and you got to be very careful because you can you can hurt yourself so so I'm gonna be putting this in like this and then using the top of the mount as a visual as best I can And what you want to do is get one bolt in, if you can, like I just did, and then verify if you put it in correctly. 
So I have the little rubber notch facing me and the two other bolts are going out. We got the three bolts all nice and snug there. While those three are there, you'll notice your uh, coilover is actually shorter or your strut itself is actually shorter than the factory one. This makes life a lot easier to do this job. Just, just a heads up. Um, there's no special tools required to install besides having a jack and pushing it up and making it go up straight. That's the catch. So you'll see here, make sure this is facing out like that. There's a little metal notch back here that lines up with your strut on the back. And then what we're going to do is going to go up using your jack, doing the best you can to line it up by hand. Get it up. Once you feel it already bottom out and you can't go down anymore, you're set. You're gonna get your old bolt, the one that goes up here. Press it through. And you're gonna get this one as tight as you can get it first, okay? Those are 18 and a 14 um, triple square from earlier. And then you just use your rat one of the ratchets to hold it in place while the other one tightens the nut or the bolt. You can go back and forth like this too, it works. And we're getting snug now. Nice and snug. You should be able to just drop your suspension now. And now it's in place. Okay. Next step is to pretty much reverse install your all your components and then we're going to work on the back. So we got now the tie rod, the strut bolted on, the uh, ball joint uh, bolted in. We got these. I got the little uh, height adjustment for the lights bolted in. You're done. Torque everything to spec and work on the rear necks. Um, just as again, again, as a quick reminder, always remember to backtrack what you did and not forget uh, any missing bolt or anything like that. That's why I keep everything with me uh, throughout, throughout the entire process. That way, um, everything goes back into its original home as best as possible and obviously torque everything down to specifications. Now let's work on the rear. All right, we're now on the rear. So there's a 21 here two 16s on top and then there's an 18 holding this control arm over here uh, break loose the 18 uh, make sure you use your jack and put a little bit of tension on it like how I have I have a little bit just enough so the spring doesn't shoot out on you or the control arm just doesn't shoot down that's all you got to do okay break everything loose and I'll show you what to do next so I already removed the bolt on the control arm so we're gonna drop you know, see the control arm just drops nice and slow because we're letting we're taking all the tension off as slow as possible. 
Once we do that, you can pull the spring out now if you want to. There's no bad time. It took the rear bottom perch out with it. It's not supposed to come out with it, so put that back. You need the you need the lower perch. The upper one you don't because we'll uh, it comes with the new rubber bushing on the new perch. So we don't need the upper perch on the uh, on this setup. So keep the lower perch, the upper one you this guy we don't need anymore. Your new spring and uh, the new uh, uh, strut, uh, the height adjustment will come with it. The next step here is removing this 21 right here. So this is a 21 millimeter, you need to take that off. And then you got the two 16s on top. So we're done. We've just removed the rear shock, with the two 16s and the, eight, uh, the 21 here in the back. There is a light height adjustment in the rear as well. But the good thing on this car, it goes down more than far enough for us to put the spring in and the uh, coilover in here. So I'm not uh, overly concerned about damaging it because it's got a lot of play for us. Next step is to remove um, this shock, separate the shock from the uh, shock mount. We All we need is just the top mount and this plastic cover. And we have to use a 17 to remove these guys. All right, so now on your spring, you have a flat side and a round side. Flat side points up, round side points down. When you put the round side down, it goes into the perch and wait until you spin it until it locks and you can't spin it anymore. You're going to put your perch in, slide into its little, into its new home. Okay, the perch itself has a little rubber uh, gasket on it and that just prevents it from squeaking while it's on here. Once you have that, you get your jack back over here and you're going to bolt this on first. Okay, don't put the shock in. Next, first bolt the control arm down, then the shock, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, put the shock in first then bolt on the uh, um, the spring. <laughs> Wrong order. Ah, got ahead of myself. Shot goes in first, then the spring. Because uh, if not, you're not going to have enough space to uh, ratchet onto the uh, the shock um, correctly. So we mounted the shock using the two 16s on top, then the 21. Then we put the sp spring in with the perch, line that up, use your jack. Use your jack to push the control arm up to help you line up the bolt so you can get this, uh, get this guy in. Once you do that, pretty much smooth sailing from there on forward. So you gotta find that sweet spot for that bolt to go in. <sighs> there it is. You always gotta give it a little college try here. You'll get it in though. Once you do that, Take it off of that and tighten everything down. And voila, you got the front and the rear done. Not bad. I'm able to do this under three to four hours, uh, removal and installation. Uh, what's the biggest key here out of all your uh, uh, pretty much process of doing this is making sure you have a jack, making sure you have new hardware or new um, bushings for the front that solves way solves a ton of time because removing the old strut and putting it together it's, it's a process uh, this way you don't have to do as much i give it about seven threads down which is about an in, about half an inch of space um, i think it's going to be just enough so the car won't be too low or too high uh, much better stance than i had before 
Uh, that's it. Let's get it all tightened up and see what it looks like.